Hello everyone, uh, welcome to one of LimaCon's virtual events. Uh, here today we are uh, going to um, start the Inbounds Volume 5. Uh, during the previous uh, uh, events of the, uh, the Inbounds event series, we have uh, discussed uh, different topics such as uh, LinkedIn sales, such as frictionless sales inside of HubSpot, such as uh, buyer personas and uh, other interesting uh, topics. And today we are going to cover something a little different, something connected to uh, sales um, in several ways and in some other ways connected to marketing and especially advertising. This is a topic which is really hot, hot nowadays and uh, it's getting uh, more and more popular with uh, every day. So I'm really glad that uh, our guest today, Christian, is uh, one of the people who are really much involved in uh, this type of topic, which is the topic of account-based marketing. So Christian uh, is a representative of a platform, one of the most famous platform on the European markets for conducting such campaigns for uh, account-based marketing. So I will not uh, uh, say any more words, but give the word to Christian to present himself and start the presentation with this interesting, I hope, topic. Christian, the stage is yours. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Christian and today I will be presenting about uh, account-based marketing. So let me just uh, share my screen and you can already start with the presentation. So in this presentation, um, I will talk about account-based marketing and uh, how, can it be, um, how can it be used for selling to enterprise clients and what are the business impacts and how can it uh, contribute to the overall marketing and sales effectiveness. So my name is uh, Christian and I have a couple of years of experience in the marketing technology field. I have also hands-on experience working with large companies and uh, their B2B enterprise marketing stack. And at the moment I'm working as a senior director of channel and partner sales at uh, Enrich, the leading European ABM SaaS platform. So on today's agenda, first of all, we'll talk about uh, what is ABM, what are the different types of ABM, and also how can it be used to generate sales intelligence for both uh, sales and marketing purposes. Then uh, we'll also talk about like uh, what are your companies offering and how does the digital buying journey look like and what kind of uh, technology and data can contribute to the marketing and sales success of uh, ABM. Then uh, we'll also define how can ABM impact, have an impact on your business, both from marketing and sales perspective. And uh, we will also discuss what are the differences between LinkedIn advertising and using an ABM platform for targeting specific accounts. And uh, I will give you like a short introduction to the Enrich ABM platform and uh, also highlight how much should you invest in ABM or how much companies usually invest in. Then in the end, we can have a question and answer session where I can answer all your questions that you might have. Okay, Christian, just before starting, I would like to say to our audience, uh, just in one sentence or in several words, why use ABM marketing instead of, for example, retargeting or just uh, CRM uh, targeting or any other type of marketing campaign? Why is it so important to use exactly account-based marketing here? Yes, so basically when you are using uh, account-based marketing, then you are, you are using it because you're focusing on the B2B segment. So it makes sense only for companies that are operating in the B2B segment. And uh, by focusing on specific companies that are in your ideal customer profile, then you can target the exact companies that you would like to have as customers and uh, not only set up like advertising campaign that you might, be, with the goal of might be reaching uh, those companies, that are in your ideal customer profile and those that you would like to have as customers. So basically account-based marketing makes sense for uh, also like uh, focusing with, with, with focus on like a large enterprise clients and uh, that way you can engage with those exact companies that you would like to have on board from specific segments that your company is uh, serving. 
Okay, so many people are really keen on the concept of inbound marketing. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of marketers are drawing a comparative line between inbound marketing and uh, account-based marketing. And actually, uh, some of them say it's the opposite. Account-based marketing is like the opposite of inbound marketing. Would you, would you say this is right? Or in fact, what's your interpretation of uh, this uh, statement? I wouldn't say if it's uh, if it's really the opposite because uh, these two things can also be complementary to each other depending on the type of sales that the company is doing. So, for example, if a company is focusing on uh, on like enterprise products and selling uh, to the B two B segment and servicing like uh, large enterprise clients, then ABM makes uh, much more sense. But uh, if uh, companies have like a shorter sales cycle, like uh, it doesn't have to be like a that complex uh, buying committee. And uh, also the sh sales cycle is like shorter, maybe a couple of days or maybe one month. Then, uh, then it also makes sense to like use uh, inbound marketing because then transactional sales can also be used to generate uh, business results. So it depends. It depends on like uh, what is the goal of the business and what kind of uh, customer segments you are serving. So it's not like the one is better than the other, but it's uh, it's used for different type of uh, services and product offerings. All right, but uh, if we specify, if we talk about specifically B2B companies, mm -hmm. and if we have to compare the account-based marketing and inbound marketing, especially in this sphere, um, how would you rate those two? How would you say they are positioned, especially in terms of B2B? Yeah, in like uh, B2B, when we talk about like inbound marketing, then inbound marketing uh, doesn't have like an an account layer to it so you can get like uh, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads but uh, it really depends on you like how will you qualify those leads and uh, how will you get them to be to become like a closed opportunity either uh, either won or lost and for for those you have to have like uh, people opt in to uh, certain different campaigns you will use like uh, email uh, automation and marketing automation in order to get like a large quantities of leads but uh, when you're focusing on B2B companies, you have to make sure that you're, that you're targeting like the right exact companies that can generate uh, value for your business. So because of that, uh, it makes more sense to, to use like account-based marketing because you can target specifically those companies. And with inbound marketing, you don't have that, uh, that strict of a focus and you can't really get the insight and the intelligence data that you would require in a complex buying journey that you might have with like large B2B, B2B clients. So in that sense, it makes more sense to focus on like the exact accounts and uh, get like the exact uh, companies that are looking for your services. And uh, with inbound marketing, you're more just uh, getting uh, companies on board and without uh, focusing and then uh, you have to have like uh, also like a filtering mechanism for that to find out that actually from all those leads, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads, which of the companies makes sense for my business. And with account-based marketing, you can spend all your resources on those exact companies that you are looking for. So it's like a bit different approach, but uh, both can be used depending on like the offering that the company has. All right, all right, thanks for answering. All right, so should we get started with the, with the presentation or is sure, there any sure, question? Sure, sure, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, as the first question, like is one too many uh, ABM a right fit for your organization? Uh, we have uh, discussed it, but first of all, let's talk about that. Like what is account-based marketing? So account-based marketing is uh, as ABM, it's a strategic approach to designing and executing highly targeted personalized marketing programs and initiatives to drive business growth and impact with specific named accounts. So basically, you can set up advertising campaigns for a list of accounts that you would like to have as customers within your uh, ideal customer profile uh, segment. And uh, you can exactly engage with those exact companies and uh, see how do they interact with your advertising and also with your website. And based on the data, you can pass on the data to marketing and sales. And you can be more efficient in, uh, in executing sales and marketing activities based on the analytics data that you have specifically from those accounts and companies that you are targeting. Okay. And, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, just to interrupt you uh, for a while, can you here draw again a comparison line 
uh, between the roles of salespeople and marketing people when executing account-based marketing campaigns? Uh, we, will, we will get to that point. Uh, I, will, I will talk about that in a couple of minutes. All right, all right. So we, will, we, will, we will focus also on that. But uh, basically, when you're doing like uh, account-based uh, marketing, then it has to have like a strategic focus of like uh, improving like the business reputation and the relationship with the companies that you're targeting and also to generate revenue from those specific accounts that you're targeting. So if the purpose of the ABM campaign is to generate leads, then it is not ABM. Then uh, it is also important that you have to create like a tight partnership and integration between sales and marketing because these two departments have to work in a collaboration in order to deliver results. And if those two uh, departments doesn't work together, then it is not ABM. Then uh, also regarding the targeting and the messaging and, uh, and the campaign that you're setting up for these customers have to be very much personalized. And uh, in order to uh, create like uh, relevant campaigns for these customers, you have to apply deep customer insight and uh, make the campaigns specifically targeted for the accounts that you, uh, that you would like to reach and uh, have as a customer. And uh, if the experience is not uh, custom and uh, not very much personalized, then it is also not ABM. So there are several different types of ABM campaigns, most like uh, three different campaigns that we can talk about. There are one-to-one -one ABM campaigns. So in these cases, it can be that uh, marketers work with individual accounts and uh, usually the, uh, the marketing teams develop a highly customized uh, program specifically on one account. So let's say that maybe you have a company and you would like to sell your product to all the ABM offices around the world and then all the marketers and sales teams will focus on, um, on targeting uh, only IBM companies. So when you're setting up like a one-to-one -one campaign, then it can be like 10 to 50 accounts that you're targeting depending on the size of the account that you're going after. But in this case, the, the whole process is very much focused on this specific account. Then there are also one to few ABM, account, ABM campaigns. So in this case, you, the marketers are focusing on a smaller group of accounts, maybe a specific industry vertical or maybe an industry. So let's say that maybe you are selling uh, uh, wind turbine blades, for example, and then you're looking for uh, wind turbine companies around the world, and uh, you're only looking at companies that, that could be targeted within uh, these specific uh, industry segment. And maybe in this case, you have, around, let's say, like 20 to 100, 150 accounts that can be targeted maybe in several countries within this specific uh, industry vertical. And then you also have one to many accounts, in which case uh, the marketers are working with, uh, with a couple of hundred or maybe uh, a couple of thousand accounts. And they create a priority list of accounts and they use technology to engage and uh, personalize the marketing activities to those accounts and track the results within all those uh, couple of thousand accounts and on an ongoing basis optimize their approach towards um, towards getting more of these customers on board from these priority lists. And as you can see also on the pyramid, the, the more you go with the personalization, the higher will be the investment and the return on investment per account. So usually like if, uh, if there's a one-to-one -one ABM campaign, then it's a higher investment for a few accounts. And in a one-to-many campaign, it's lower investment uh, spread on, uh, on many accounts. So basically how like uh, sales and marketing is working together, the main goal of, uh, of the sales and marketing team is actually to generate sales intelligence data that can be used by both of the departments. So with the goal, you start out with account based marketing that you're focusing on strategic and uh, key accounts. And uh, when you are setting up your ABM campaigns, it focus on these strategic accounts in a, in a selected ABM campaign, one-to-one, one-to-many, one-to-few, then uh, based on your advertising uh, results, you can detect actually that which are the medium to high intent accounts because you can track that which accounts are interacting with your ads and with your website. And uh, based on that, you can detect like which accounts have uh, high or medium uh, intent, sales intent intensity with your website and advertising. 
then from those you can pass on the information to marketing as uh, which high intent accounts and individuals can be retargeted and after these accounts and individuals are retargeted then you get the more granular data on that that actually which accounts are interacting more with your advertisement and with your web page and uh, based on these high intent accounts you can pass on that information to the intent sales inside sales team and the in inside sales team can identify the locations and uh, high uh, high intent accounts and uh, get more information on them and uh, then this information for the high intent accounts can be passed on to the sales representatives and these uh, information can be turned into tasks and opportunities that can be inserted into salesforce and then after they uh, reach out to these uh, customers they can get either success or no and then the whole process will start all over again and that way you get like a more granular overview all over um, like again and uh, actually the objective is to gather actionable intelligence for the sales team because at the end of the day it will be the sales team who will actually close the deals but they can use the data generated from the marketing activities to do it more efficiently and yes um, in terms of your, uh, in terms of this slide and the previous one that you showed, uh, I would be interested to understand, um, first of all, uh, do you have any observations, any statistics, uh, when uh, the three types of account-based marketing work best? For example, when the one-to-many approach works best, when uh, the other approaches work best, in which cases? Uh, can we illustrate this by giving our audience some examples, for example? Yeah, it can be different cases. Like, it really depends on uh, what does the company would like to approach or achieve. So, for example, if you have like a specific large account that you would like to have in your portfolio and you're selling products that are related, related uh, to their services. So for example, you might want to sell, um, sell to IBM because you have maybe like uh, servers located all around the world. And then it is important for you that, uh, that IBM should, uh, should have all their data on your servers and then you can go after them on, um, on an international level and only after IBM. And in this case, you will set up like a one to one-to-one -one campaign because it because all the advertising campaigns and also on the con the content on your website can be highly specialized and directed towards ABM. So when they see an ad, then they will see that uh, that uh, it could be something for IBM, and they can see that it's specifically cost customized for IBM employees and uh, looking at the exact problems that, uh, that IBM has. So that can be like a one-to-one -one approach. And uh, there can be also a case when you're maybe focusing on, uh, on selling to a certain industry. So maybe you're selling uh, to, to certain, um, like maybe an IT companies. So maybe you're, you have like a specific uh, software tool that can be used by several different uh, IT companies. And you might target uh, companies that are like uh, large, medium-sized companies, maybe between uh, 5,000 and 1,000 employees, or maybe 1,000 to 500 employees. And uh, then uh, you have like maybe some specific uh, sub-industry that you're focusing on. So maybe you're only focusing on companies that are working with uh, automation systems within the, within the IT segment. And then that is like a smaller set of uh, sub-segment of companies that you can target or maybe IT companies that are, that are focusing on telecommunication companies. And then it's like a smaller sub-segment and the fewer, fewer accounts that you can target and maybe companies that are targeting uh, telecommunication companies or providing services to telecommunication companies have similar business needs that you can highlight and uh, get that involved in the advertisement campaigns. So that way you can see that actually which accounts from this sub industry or sub vertical are actually interacting with your campaigns. And then if you set up like a one to many campaign, then you can target maybe um, several different uh, industry segments that, uh, that can apply to your product that can, that can be used by your product. And uh, then you set up different campaigns within uh, for, uh, for these uh, several different lists of customers that can be like uh, 
high priority for you. So for example, you might have, have, a, have maybe a dashboarding tool and maybe your dashboarding tool can be used by several different companies in the US. So you can set up an, an, an awareness campaign in the US for companies that are using uh, dashboarding tools to look at their metrics. So that way you can target all the companies in the US that are working with several different industries for whom it's important to track their, their internal business metrics and, internal, and, and uh, external business metrics in a certain way with dashboarding tools. And then that can be applied to many different companies. And then the budget can also be spread with the larger set of, uh, set of companies that you are targeting. All right. Um, in terms of popularity, usage, uh, which of them do you think is the most uh, common approach? Uh, it really depends on, on, the, on the business goals of the company. So do you want to sell into one large account and you want to have like uh, all, of their, all of their offices and all of their branches within that large account, which can be like, I don't know, maybe, yeah, as an example, like IBM. They also do like, do have uh, many different branches and if you want to have them on board, then, then if that's your goal, then you can create like a one-to-one -one campaign for them. But if you want to get like general awareness about your product, then it can be maybe a one-to-many approach that you are, that you are uh, using for that. Or if you have like a very niche product that is, uh, that is focusing on a very specific industry segment, then it can be a one-to-few approach. So it really depends on like uh, on the business goals that you would like to achieve and the product that you have that can be applied to uh, many different companies or it can be just relevant for only a few companies. Okay, and in terms of your experience, your background, which one do you use most often? Uh, it depends. So it depends on the on the clients what kind of um, what kind of uh, campaigns they are using. So for example, like large companies can also run like one to many campaigns, and uh, they can also run like uh, one to one if there's like a very important uh, set of uh, set of accounts that they would like to uh, reach out to. So it can really depend on a case to case and also on the type of the business as uh, what kind of uh, requirements they have regarding their marketing marketing plans and uh, who do they want to close and uh, what is their focus. Okay, all right. Thank you for answering this. All right. So actually, uh, when you think about like uh, B2B digital marketing, it's not one size fits for all because depending on the product that you're selling, there can be different uh, tools that you can use. So, uh, there can be also like different uh, type of offerings. So maybe you have a transactional product that costs like less than 100,000 euro and you can sell this product with, uh, with like a personal sales. So maybe the sales cycle is shorter. Maybe you have like a subscription based uh, sales tool that can be sold maybe uh, in two weeks or one month time. And if people are reaching out on the phone, you can close those deals easily. Then you also have transactional products that also doesn't require too, too long time to sell, but uh, these uh, products might be available online and people can be reached on different online channels with advertising, but it still doesn't require like a very complex um, buying committee that will decide uh, for, the, for the buying of the product. And uh, it also doesn't require that much um, that much decision makers regarding the sale of this product. So it's still like in the transactional category. Then there's also like enterprise products that are costing more than 100,000 euros. And uh, you're focusing on getting new logos on board and you're generating more than 50% of, uh, of the sales from these uh, new large enterprise clients that you're signing up. And there, there are also enterprise products that cost uh, more than 100,000 euro and you're getting your clients from an installed base. So let's say that you already have, have, uh, have uh, one of these companies, but you would like to have them in, uh, you would like to have them on a board in all of the countries. So you're just doing cross selling and upselling within those accounts that you already have and you're generating more than 50% of the sales from those existing enterprise clients that you have. So now we're gonna have a poll and uh, I would like to ask all of you to choose uh, what is the product that you're selling, like in which category can you put your product? All right, so uh, people are voting.
Good. So, uh, in terms of uh, your experience, Christian, uh, where would you put yourself and uh, the things that you're doing? Yes. So, with Enrich, we are mostly focusing on like uh, on like uh, large enterprise clients and on clients who are actually um, focusing on enterprise segments because. In many cases, these enterprise sales require like has like a more complex um, sales cycle. So it also takes a longer time, and also quite a lot of people are involved within the within the customer journey. So because of that, uh, yeah, we are focusing mostly on like uh, enterprise uh, clients with our product and reach. All right. So, um, in fact, most of our, or most of the people who are watching us are watching um, on uh, different social media. We don't have many people here uh, uh, in Zoom, but still, we have um, uh, we have some answers. And uh, in fact, transactional products uh, for personal sales and transactional products for e-commerce are leading mm -hmm. in this uh, poll. So probably we have most people who are interested in those two yes that's totally fine uh so yeah like uh, mostly like abm can be used rather for uh, these uh, two segments because like uh, as i mentioned like with the transactional products there's like uh, there's like a shorter sales cycle and also a smaller buyer committee involved so abm uh, makes sense more in like if you would like to sell to uh, large enterprise clients and uh, also if you have like already existing clients within the enterprise segment uh, in this case. So yeah. All right. So yeah, about uh, the B2B customer journey, as we already talked about like transactional and enterprise uh, clients, like uh, usually this is what people um, imagine when they're thinking about the B2B customer journey. So people are visiting your website, then if they interact, they become leads then you can retarget them and then they become marketing qualified leads Then the sales reach out to them they become sales qualified leads then they become opportunities and at the end of the funnel they become customers but the only problem with this model is that that it has nothing to do with an actual b2b customer journey because it is not representative to what the customer goes through when they are about to decide to purchase a new product it is mostly focused on like it's like a simplified version of the marketing and sales process. And it is from the seller's perspective, perspective as how do uh, companies interact with the, their product and getting closer to it. In the real life, uh, a B2B customer, uh, customer journey looks more like this. So there's plenty of uh, different uh, stages and also a lot of people that are involved in this decision. So at day one, it starts like here, and then they have to find out like actually what is the problem of the company. And for that, they have to do like independent research. They have to uh, get uh, download white papers, do some research on their own to find out actually that what is the problem that they need a solution for. Then after they know the problem, they're exploring different solutions. And it also takes still a lot of, uh, lot of research. So they're also doing web searches, they're downloading uh, white papers again. They're um, they're getting, they're having discussions about uh, what 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 is actually the right solution for their exact problems. And after they find like what are the solutions available, then they're building requirements like what is what is required from their from their business needs. And this is the context for like uh, for like a large enterprise sales. So companies that have more than thousand or five thousand or ten thousand uh, employees. And then after they did the requirement building, then they're actually looking for the vendors, the different vendors. So at this point, they have like uh, demos with different providers and uh, talk about like what could be the procurement and uh, how, how the process works. And after they build the requirements and test like many different uh, providers, then they're actually about to select the supplier. And when they're doing that, then also a lot of people involved from the finance team, from the legal team, from the users of the platform, and then the then uh, the product gets approached by all of these parties and around maybe after two years they actually decide to purchase a certain product after going through all this process on multiple levels of the organization so if you're not able to gather customer journey data and turn it down with technology then you can't really have like a business impact on this whole complex b2b buying decision 
because you have to know that actually what are the things that people are looking at on each of these stages and you have to be everywhere in order to convince them that uh, that what is that what what you are providing do, or in, during the all of the steps yeah in fact uh, what if people are starting to deny the part with the funnel and uh, i have noticed that uh, a lot of the biggest sales and marketing organizations uh, throughout the world are starting to think of their own ways to represent the buyer's journey and uh, probably i should mention uh, one of those uh, approaches towards the buyer's journey which has been uh, inspired and which was born in HubSpot as uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, this event series is uh, uh, inspired by HubSpot as well. So, uh, do you know what HubSpot are uh, offering as a model for the buyer's journey? Uh, no, but you can tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. So, it's really interesting. They're presenting it like a flywheel uh, in which we have several stages. First, we have the attract stage in which we are first talking with the client, of course, and trying to solve their problems. Then we have the engage stage and uh, then we have the delight stage. And during the engage stage, uh, we have already, um, we already know whether we'll be able to solve their problems. And uh, there we are continuing uh, towards the uh, deal closure. And at the end, uh, with the delight stage, we are doing the customer success. Mm -hmm. uh, where um, where we are trying to satisfy the customer, of course, uh, as much as possible in order for this customer to become a customer as well at some point in the future. And that's mm -hmm. the tricky part about the flywheel because, you know, after, after uh, delight, there is again attract and delight and attract are so connected as attract and engage are and that's why uh, it's represented as a wheel as a flywheel because each stage each single stage of the buyer's journey is really important not only for the outcome not only for the every successive move move that uh, those clients are going to have but uh, mm, every stage is important for the whole buyer's journey and for the company's success at the end mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. I guess it's also the case like uh, why, uh, why it is important with the ABM at the same time like to be able to generate data because as you mentioned like with the, with the HubSpot model, model it is also like uh, important that each of the different steps are very much closely related to each other so that they are in close collaboration with each other and uh, very much important to one another and with ABM it is important to actually be able to gather data throughout this uh, whole, uh, whole buying process. Because if you're running maybe different advertising campaigns and uh, you are focusing on each of these different things, uh, like uh, if they have identified a problem, if they are looking for a solution, you can see from the engagement data that actually which stage of the buying journey uh, this, these specific companies are. So you can build up that actually based on the advertising that is customized for each of the different uh, set of uh, people within those companies you can see that actually for which advertisements they are more engaged with. So you can actually see that which stage in the buying journey they are. And uh, if they're more ready to actually buy a solution and uh, somewhere around here, then you also have a better chance of uh, getting closer to these companies and, uh, and get closer to like uh, getting them as a customer. But also if they're not really interacting, then they might be in this part of the, of the, of the customer buying journey. Yeah. So based on like if you're if you're doing like ABM campaign for the whole process, then you can actually see that how do the the buyer intents change over time, and you can also pass on that information to the to marketing and sales team, and that way you can you can track the whole buyer journey based on engagement data from your advertisement and also from your uh, website data. So yeah, it is it is very interesting to actually see like uh, how also it changing like um, like all over the world that they they trying to find out also new models to to actually define like how do customers are interacting with your product and what are their requirements yeah. so yeah but uh, but back to the back to the presentation like uh, so basically like when you are actually looking to engage with those customers then, uh, then actually to invest in, uh, in uh, marketing technology is a must because you have to find out actually like 
how do people interacting with your product and uh, when do they look for your product and you have to be there in some ways and for that you need different uh, different uh, marketing technology investments so you can invest into like advertising and promotion content and experience social and relationship commerce sales data and uh, management to manage all these processes it also depends on your line of business what are the martech um, what market investment you will take and also how big percentage of your overall budget will be investing into marketing technologies but uh, in many cases like uh, many of the companies are saying that they can take care of uh, like all the things that are related to your marketing activities so you will just need uh, one product and uh, it will solve everything but it's usually not true because you need like a whole set of uh, products in, in depending on that like what is the, the service that you're selling and also depending on that, like what kind of results you want to see. So for example, there is HubSpot, which is a really great uh, product. And uh, they are also focusing on like uh, getting, uh, like it's very good for like qualifying leads and also for nurturing like large quantities of leads. You can get information from a large set of customers that are uh, getting to their website, filling out forms and you can retarget them. But uh, at the same time, it is not that useful for uh, generating a lot of qualified leads, but it is uh, it is offering like a very good solution for getting the leads and uh, and to get uh, get to the bottom of it like uh, what is working. Then uh, there's also like lead forensics, which is uh, really great for like uh, transactional person driven sales uh, with the, with the good inside sales results. But uh, at the same time, it is not very useful for other segments than transactional sales because it's uh, mostly person driven. So it also has its downsides. Then there's also like website analytics, like uh, Adobe analytics. And it's very good for like uh, general site optimization for like all the visitors and tracking how do people interact with your site. And it's really good for like uh, transactional sales, and enterprise sales or e-commerce sales, sorry. And, but it's not really used for, for enterprise sales because you don't have the account data layer. And uh, you also have like uh, Enrich, which is like an account-based uh, account marketing one-to-many platform. And it's ideal for ads and analytics and for enterprise offerings. But it's, it is not really useful for transactional businesses because you have to invest uh, a lot of money for the different accounts that you would like to target. So it will be not applicable for uh, transactional businesses. So yeah, so you need to understand like why and how do each of the marketing invest investments provides measurable return on investment. And based on that, you have to decide that actually which of these platforms does it worth for you to invest in. Yeah, and uh, if I uh, can add something here, in fact, the stack of marketing and sales technologies, of marketing and sales instrument is growing bigger and bigger every day. Uh, it's like a sea of instruments and uh, probably uh, one of the most essential factors for uh, any company's success is choosing those right instruments and implementing them in the right strategy because as you said there are a lot of instruments and a lot of uh, them yes they are quite niche but uh, if you are not really into those instruments uh, uh, you can see that they have some other functionalities they have some other yes, exactly. but this is not uh, what will help you get to the point where you want to be so really the best yes. means of instruments that integrate that that talk to each other uh, exactly. is the key to uh, uh, company's prosperity i believe yes exactly like uh, as, uh, as it was like shown in the previous uh, slide that there, there are like quite a lot of tools and it is really dependent on your product and also your kind the kind of customers that you're going after what makes sense for you and there can be cases when you are actually finding the right like a company can find like the right tools that they're using or maybe they just dependent on like, oh, this actually worked for uh, for one of my one of the companies that I know about. But maybe they are selling a different uh, service, so you cannot be sure. Like, if it, you you have to do your research and find out like what is actually matching your company. And uh, that's also the case with like uh, with like if uh, if you are doing like a standard digital campaign process and working with an in-house marketing team. And there can be also like an ABM process or like. Uh, like working together with the strategic marketing agency because you can do content development and you can uh, develop that content on your own in-house with your marketing team and decide like okay what could be the right content to put in front of my 
my customers and what could be really engaging. But at the same time, if you're like uh, working together with a strategic marketing agency like uh, Limacon, or uh, if, you, if you're using Enrich, then you can actually see that which are the contents that are really resonating with your, with your target audience and you have like uh, professional insights on them. And with Enrich, you can also measure like uh, that actually which content generates traction with like uh, the segments that you're targeting. Then it's also the setup and orchestration, like actually what channels should I use and what, what are the things that I should be using in order to engage with the, with the customers that I'm targeting. And uh, you can have your in-house team to actually set up a marketing strategy based on like experience or based on ideas or you can work together with a strategic marketing agency or use uh, uh, Enrich and find out that actually what is the right setup and what is the right orchestration to go in order to engage with, uh, with the right customers. And it can be the same with the media placement and buying. So you, if you want to like, uh, have like a larger awareness campaign, you can choose to work together with the media agency as a company and that can cost maybe a lot of money and uh, the results are not guaranteed. But uh, if you're working together with a strategic agency and also if you're uh, working with Enrich and target like enterprise clients, then the whole media uh, placement and media buying process can be automated. And it also gathers you data from the target accounts that you're targeting, but uh, it can be also taken care of, care of by a strategic uh, marketing agency. Then it is the same with the analytics and reporting because Georgie, as you also mentioned, then people can have like, you know, the many different tools and maybe they're measuring also metrics that are not relevant. So maybe if there's a company that are focusing on like uh, enterprise sales and they would like to look at the, the website visitors, and what are their conversion rates, then they might not looking at the right numbers. And if, if the company is working together with like a strategic marketing agency or they're looking at uh, metrics uh, from Enrich generated from advertising uh, campaigns or from website metrics, then it can be much more relevant. And uh, in this case, like it can be like costly to do it like um, on the company level and try out many different methods and try to figure out things on your own. And it can, it, it's not necessarily bad, but it can be time consuming. And, and during that uh, the time uh, of finding the right uh, tools and the right team and the right, uh, right way to set up the campaigns, it can, it can consume a lot of money. So actually like working together with the strategic agency or also using Enrich for like enterprise uh, sales can be actually cost saving rather than like using all those different things and getting them from different sources from different uh, companies. So actually uh, in a lean process, it's like uh, you can let the, the product, the tool to automate the whole ad buying process with like Enrich and uh, you can also save a lot of uh, time and money by working together with the strategic agency. So after you decided like, okay, I'm gonna to work together with the strategic agency, I know like what kind of tools I need, what are the metrics that I have to check, then you have to also uh, focus on that, that actually which are the optimal metrics and what is the return on investment from each of the different metrics. So there are in-media metrics, for example, like ad impressions and click-through rates, which might make sense for like e-commerce businesses, but generally very hard to show like the return on investment because you can, you, you know that actually how many people see my, my uh, ads and how many people clicked on it, but you, you don't necessarily see like, okay, how did it convert it in the end? And uh, how did it make sense for like, uh, for like maybe a larger company who's, uh, who's, who's maybe not selling like a transactional product. Then there are also website metrics, like how many, time have they visited the page and uh, how many visits you're getting, which can work for all segments. But uh, when it's uh, focused on like enterprise segments, then the account dimension is required to show the return investment because uh, for your web page, you can have a lot of uh, visitors from many different sources. But if you don't know that actually, if you're a B2B company, that which uh, accounts are visiting your website, then then you don't know like if the visit, if the large number of visits makes sense or if the time that they spend on the page makes sense. Then there are also lead metrics. So when you are uh, measuring like leads, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, which can be really great for like transactional, uh, transactional sales because you can have like a large quantity of leads that you can go after, but it's bad for enterprises because for the enterprise segment, it is always, they always measure their, um, their results in one sales metrics. And when you have like market, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads, 
then you have to have a way to to get close them so in themselves they are only leads so they are not uh, like a, like a metric in, in themselves then uh, you also have uh, marketing influence sales which is usually used by uh, enterprises and uh, in this case like all the data sources are used to correlate with sales from the marketing perspective so you can see that actually how did the engagement from the different advertising campaigns and your website have affected on an overall base, basis the sales and uh, that way from the marketing influence sales you can see how did the marketing activities affected your overall sales so the biggest mistake is to choose that is the same with like choosing the wrong uh, wrong uh, marketing technology stack is also to choose the wrong metrics to track based on uh, what is the product that you're actually selling and who do you sell these things to so you have to make sure to get the top management commitment for the logic of delivering the return on investment for the selected metric and tracking the metrics that are relevant for your product and uh, for, for, for your business. Yeah, I would totally agree here with you. Probably uh, after choosing the marketing and sales instruments that you're going to work with, uh, the next really essential thing is the metrics that uh, you're going to uh, track every month or uh, every year or uh, uh, whatever because uh, those digital instruments they present us uh, with really a lot of charts a lot of uh, uh, ready-made uh, reporting and a lot of options for custom reporting so we can track basically anything that we want it really yeah. depends on our imagination yeah. but uh, what's really important to track that's the question that we yeah. need to, go to answer to ourselves Exactly, because you can you can track, as I mentioned, like many irrelevant things, but it is really important to find out like which uh, segment you're operating in and what makes sense for you to keep track of. Yeah, that. yeah. and uh, what I have um, uh, noticed is that a lot of people who are in the uh, fields of uh, digital sales, digital marketing technologies, they sometimes lose sight of the bigger picture and uh, those metrics are especially um, connected with uh, bigger picture thinking and mm -hmm. when, when, especially where we want our company to be in one year's time, in five years time, or even 10 years time. So uh, we should really think big. We should really focus on the big picture when uh, choosing uh, at least our most important uh, charts and uh, metrics. Yes, exactly. I totally agree. So yeah, then uh, I also prepared like a bit of a um, uh, comparison between like uh, using ABM and LinkedIn. Uh, because like many of the companies who, who are working in the B2B space, they usually start out with their focusing their, uh, their efforts on like specific companies by using uh, LinkedIn advertising. And uh, it can also be more costly in some ways and also deliver a bit less result because like if you look at the targeting of like for example Enrich and LinkedIn then uh, Enrich targets its advertising based on account IP address levels so you can target like company IP addresses and also the cookies that are associated with those IPs so you can also track the engagement down to the cookie level within each of the each of the accounts and uh, with LinkedIn you're targeting like job titles and accounts but uh, it is also like a requirement to to target like people who are also active users on LinkedIn, so they see like the see like the ads and everything. So it's like rare, rarely an actual ABM use case. And then there's also the distribution as which platforms are uh, available. So on Enrich, you can uh, set up advertisement campaigns on programmatic display advertising, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So you can basically reach people anywhere. And uh, with LinkedIn, you have them on LinkedIn and also on Microsoft Ad Network. Then the primary platform with Enrich is like uh, desktop. You can also see the engagement from mobile, but usually for B2B clients and especially like large enterprise clients, it is important to track like the desktop engagement more than mobile engagement. And LinkedIn is mostly focused on like uh, mobile. And uh, the click volume that you can get, that is like actually the indication of like uh, the engagement that you're getting from your campaigns can be like high to few impressions per cookies per day with Enrich because you get like daily available cookies within the accounts. And uh, from LinkedIn, it can be low to few impressions per user per month. Then you also have the analytics. And uh, if you're targeting like 
B2B companies, then you can have like the account level analytics from, uh, from Enrich. And uh, for LinkedIn, you can get like campaign and lead level analytics. So it's, it can also make sense for like, yeah, like um, transactional, but if you're focusing on like B2B segments, then account level analytics makes much more sense. Then you also have the return on investment metrics and uh, with Enrich, you look at the account-based influence uh, to sales. So how did the sales opportunities have been influenced by the marketing activities? And with LinkedIn, you're looking at leads, marketing and sales qualified leads. And uh, ABM actually doesn't have to be complex. So for example, in the case of Enrich, like uh, as we talked about like the different type of ABMs in the beginning, you can set up your segment so you can specify that actually which are the target accounts that you would like to target. And you can see that how many cookies are available within each of those uh, targeted accounts. And you can upload also like a predefined set of uh, companies that you would like to go after because if you're focusing on the B2B segment, then you should have like a better understanding of that, like actually which are the companies that I have as ideal customer profiles that really match the criteria for me as a good customer. Then uh, you can just set up your campaign that which segments you would like to target and for how long time you want the ad campaigns to be running. And that way for that period of time while the campaign is running for targeted on those specific accounts, then you can generate sales intelligence data that you can pass on the sales and marketing and process it. Then uh, you can also create the ads within the platform. So you don't need like any uh, external account, you don't have to connect your Google account, Facebook advertising account or anything. You can just set up the ad campaigns within the account and uh, create like multiple variations. The platform will automatically create multiple variations and promote the ad formats that are performing the best. So that way the optimization will be taken care of uh, with, uh, with the AI and machine learning algorithms. Then you also, after you launch your campaigns, then you get uh, real-time analytics uh, data on the account level. So you can see that actually from the setup segments, which are the accounts that are looking at, clicking on most of your uh, ads, uh, who are actually reading the articles that you have in the ads, and uh, which accounts are watching the videos that you have in your ads. And you can also see like uh, more metrics like uh, metrics that are related to your website and uh, everything. So basically you have it like all in one and you can manage the whole process internally by using only one platform and look at the right uh, things and you don't need like uh, to invest in a couple of different technologies to find like what is actually working. And uh, actually like if you think like uh, based on like actual studies in uh, most of the US like uh, around 29% of the, of the marketing budget should be spent on like ABM advertising if people are focusing on like large enterprise segments. So that was it. So if you have any questions, I'm looking forward to receiving them. And uh, if you would like, if you think it would make sense for your company to uh, try out uh, Enrich, then uh, you can visit our website and click on the free trial and then uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, while um, waiting to see whether there are some uh, questions, uh, uh, first of all, thank you, Christian, for uh, this presentation. Um, what I can say is that, uh, especially here for, the, uh, for a lot of the Bulgarian businesses, uh, um, the, topic of, the topic of account-based marketing is um, quite new and they are just starting to think of uh, possible investments into this sphere. But uh, I'm sure this is the future and this is something that is going to uh, be getting more and more popular with the years. Uh, we can see the wave which is coming from, the, uh, from other countries where such approaches are uh, really well known and really much used. So I think this is a topic that uh, will we will be talking about a lot from now on mm -hmm. uh, if now a lot of people don't uh, know much about it so um, thank you very much for answering um, uh, the questions that i uh, uh, posed to you um, as for the audience the people who are uh, with us um, have in mind that uh, we have several more events this uh, this month 
Um, next uh, week, we are having our regular marketing hype, which is uh, uh, this month with one of Bulgaria's greatest e-commerce experts and uh, not only e-commerce, but also um, SEO experts. Uh, this is Evgeny Ordonov. Uh, probably you have heard of him. He has uh, uh, become like uh, a master of those things and everyone in the sphere knows this name. Uh, so uh, you are very welcome to join our uh, event on the topic and uh, for example the inbound is uh, uh, going to continue with the next month during the next month uh, you know we are trying to uh, deliver content and uh, discuss topics which are sometimes futuristic sometimes uh, not that uh, popular uh, but uh, we are really trying to get in depth try to um, uh, get the expertise from uh, people who really, really uh, know what they are doing with uh, uh, with their stuff. So uh, probably uh, we have uh, some topics that we are wondering about uh, for the next edition of the inbounds. But I can promise you that uh, it will be uh, really, really interesting as the topics are. Uh, as I said, quite futuristic and quite uh, um, quite interesting, especially for uh, for the market here and the market abroad as well. So thank you very much for uh, watching us all, and see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.